Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop. Before you get booked up, head over to 631 North Carrollton, right off Orleans, to Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop. Off the books, Tubby and Coos is a nerd mecca for books, board games, and geeky t-shirts. So book it over to Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop at 631 North Carrollton. If you don't want to do it by the book, use their free Wi-Fi and check their stock at tubbyandcoos.com. Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop, where it's all geek to me. Cautious Bazaar has an unconventional inventory for the discerning geek collector. Comic book related collectibles, vintage New Orleans items, militaria, and plenty for your mundane friends. Kasha's Bazaar, 5727 Jefferson Highway, the unflea market. Leave the smoke behind and come chase the clouds at the Vaping Tiger in Metairie. The Vaping Tiger has everything to suit your vaping needs, from starter kits to advanced devices. We specialize in handcrafted, artisan blended e juices designed to tickle the most fickle taste buds. Come see us at 2812 Athenia Parkway. One block off vets behind the Lazy Boy Gallery. That's the Vaping Tiger, 2812 Athenia Parkway, and at vapingtiger.com. Come out of the smoke and join us in the clouds. If you enjoy books that are sensual, macabre, unusual, and filled with magic, then delve into the worlds of award-winning author and editor Kimberly B. Richardson. Her books, Tales from a Goth Librarian 1 and 2, The Decemberists, and Mabon Pomegranate will surely satisfy your craving for the strange and unusual. Her books are available through Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, as well as Dark Oak Press at DarkOakPress.com. Have a cup of Earl Grey, turn the pages, and see what lurks within. Resistance is futile. Boldly going where no show has gone before. This is the Week in Geek on Fox Sports 1280. Broadcasting from the TubbyandCoos.com studios, here's David and Brian. Good afternoon, New Orleans. This is the Week in Geek on Fox Sports 1280. Coming to you live from the TubbyandCoos.com studios. This is David D. Squared de Corbier with... Brian Held. How the hell are you, buddy? I am great, sir. Are you great? Yeah. Really? Yeah, no, I am. Okay. <laughs> I'll go, I'll go with that. All right. As always, we strongly urge you to check out the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash the week in geek, or follow us on Twitter at Twig Radio, or check out the website at twigradio.com, and follow us on the Instagrams at the week in geek. Now, Brian, how can people listen to this lovely show? Well, once we're off the air, we're going to load up the uh, recording to spreaker.com, or you can download Spreaker for your smartphone or tablet. You can also find us on iTunes, YouTube, and FoxSportsAM1280.com, where we have all of our archives as well. So We do, and actually uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll be loading up all the pictures from MechaCon this weekend. Well, oh, where? On the on Fox Sports AM 1280. Because okay. we were loading them to Facebook oh, and I know. Instagram Dude, and all I, that stuff. I, I got the alert from my uh, phone company that said, hey, you use too much data. <laughs> Stop putting stuff on Instagram. So, and hey, uh, real quick while I'm thinking about it, on twigradio.com, our, our website, uh, there's a banner on the front page. We're going to be at uh, Pensacola Comic Convention uh, here in a few months. Uh, we just got some confirmation last night. We did. We did. Is that what? Like I thought that was coming up soon. That's like August twentieth or something. Is it August? I got to Yeah, it's like like two weeks. Okay, I don't even know. Paracon, right? Yes. Yeah, that's like in two weeks. It's like okay. August twentieth. All right. Well, we'll oh be there. Oh my God, Brian Hell, you were wrong on the <laughs> air, no less. You know, in the in the in the privacy of our own houses, you can you can make a mm-hmm. mistake, but not I, on the air. All right. Well, write it down. <laughs> I will. Oh no, I got it logged, buddy. All right. As always, let's go to our boy Scungy and his pick of the. Oh wait, you know what? What? Forget, forget Scungy. Who what? cares about him? We need to set up the show also because we have a great guest coming on. We Brian. do. Yeah. Better than Scungy. Oh. <laughs> It's a NASA scientist. He is. Uh, Dr. Jared Espley uh, is planetary studies researcher at the Goddard Space Flight Center will be on. And, uh, of course, top nerd news this week in geek history. And, uh, and we might we might actually have a full show today because it depends on uh, if we have a rain delay with the Zephyrs today. That's true. So uh, who knows? It's a crapshoot. <laughs> but now, as always, our boy Scungy in his pick of the week. I am not what you would call a handsome man. Scungy's Pick of the Week is brought to you by GameStop and ThinkGeek.com. Scungy's Pick of the Week. You might be an idiot savant. Woohoo! What's this might be stuff? Scungy, what's shaking bacon? You know, it's not that hard to find somebody that's better than me, all right? So it's not like it's a reach. Oh, come on. I know, Don't but put you're cheap down. and easy and free. <laughs> all right, buddy, what are we talking about today? 
Um, well, we're going to talk about a game called Pokin Tournament. What? Yeah, Pokin Tournament. It's for the Wii U. I figured, you know, talk a little bit about a couple of Wii, uh, Wii U games, considering the system's probably not going to be around that much longer. Well, that's true. Yeah, so... They, they, they stopped uh, making them, the right? What's the hype of Pokemon Go? Pokemon Pokin Tournament is a Pokemon game basically mixed with Tekken. Okay. So it's, you're going to have an arena, and you're going to be fighting Pokemon, which is actually something that people have wanted for quite some time. They wanted, like, a fighting game set in the Pokemon world, not just, like, you, your traditional way of poke, playing Pokemon, which is hit the fight button and then, you know, use a defend or whatnot, actually controlling the Pokemon. Oh, interesting. So it's, here's a great game on a console that will soon be no longer created and rendered obsolete. Basically, yeah, with the NX coming out next uh, March... And they're not going to be making Wii U's after this year, so. Bastards. So, you know, buy it used at uh, GameStop, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, you can buy them used at GameStop. Yeah. Or you can just go dumpster diving. So, I mean, is, you know, besides, I mean, is there any other elements? Is it only a fighting game? Basically, yeah, it's only going to be a fighting game, but you get to level up your Pokemon and, like, make them stronger as you fight in these different tournaments. You go through league play. So they've got a story mode where you, you fight these different leagues, and then you can play local against people, or you can play online matches. Okay. Well, so there's cool. a, lot of meat to it, a lot of meat to the game. I mean, it's fun. It, I mean, it's, it's basically, like I said, if you like Tekken, okay. you're, you're going to like the po- this Pokemon game. So the the platform is the Wii U. What's the only the, uh, Wii U. only the Wii U? What's the used price? Used price you could get it for about probably about fifty two bucks. Fifty two dollars for a used yeah. game. Yeah, that's wow. not bad. Fifty two dollars. You can wait, spend that much on a brand for, new wait game. Wait for a used game. Yeah. Oh no. So wait, oh, get that out of here. No <laughs> way. The new one's sixty five. Holy jeez. All right. What, what, well, why are you bringing this today, guys? Crap. Sorry about that. No, you know? no, it's it's all good. It's okay that you don't play your Pac-Man video games anymore. <laughs> so, I, I, wait, can you spell this game for me? How do you spell it? P-O-K-K-E-N. Like, Pokin. Pokin. Oh, Pokin. Yeah. So it's like Tekken, except Pokin. Okay, I got it. I got it. <laughs> oh, I got geez. it. Totally got it. <laughs> so, um... Actually, Scunji, I wanted to uh, I wanted to bring up something that that you and I kind of talked about the other day. Is uh, have you gotten a chance to play any Overwatch lately? Oh, oh my God, I was playing it today. Uh, the new Lucio Ball mode. All right. So yeah. for anybody who doesn't realize, uh, Overwatch is is celebrating the summer games, and they've done a lot of overlays, it, like you know, extra skins and, and sprays and, and poses and all kind of different things you can get for your characters from the loot boxes. But yeah, the weekly brawl that's going on right now is Lucio Ball, which is essentially what. Ra- it, we're talking about Overwatch, but anyway, there's the weekly brawl in Overwatch is Lucio Ball. It's essentially Rocket League. I thought you said yeah. Lucio Ball. Three I'm versus sorry. three. Everybody plays Lucio, and you just run around like basically a soccer pitch, hitting this big ball, trying to get in into the other opponent's goal. It is amazing. It was so much fun. I've been playing the heck out of it, you know, past couple of days when I can find a minute here and there. So, uh, th- well, Scungy, do you know if they're going to be changing the weekly brawls to any other kind of summer themed games? They haven't really announced it yet, um, th- but that's a good thing about um, Blizzard with this. They're, they're keeping this thing fresh. They're keeping the game fresh. What a lot of people are actually asking right now is they're liking Lucio Ball so much that they want it to be a permanent mode. I, do, I could totally see that. It, it, is, it is really a lot of fun. That's hopefully something that comes forward where you're able to make your own game types in Overwatch. Oh, yeah. All right. All right, Scun, do you know what that music means? That means that I'm getting fired again. You're fired. All right, buddy. As always, I I don't like you. I love you, Scunji. Fantastic. Uh, later, man. Talk to you next week. Bye. All right, Brian. Guess who's on the line? Uh, a scientist from NASA? Yes. Yes. That would be correct. <laughs> All right, guys. Stay tuned. You're listening to The Week in Geek on Fox Sports 1280. We'll be right back. This report is brought to you by Go Auto Insurance. Still slow going on the Riverbound Expressway from Carrollton up toward the Crescent City Connection. We've got a stalled 18-wheeler on the shoulder near Chapatulas. Traffic is also still quite heavy heading out to Metairie on I-10 West going out to Kenner. We've got slowing between Bonneville 
and Power Boulevard. I'm Lisa Bakke. If you see traffic problems, call us, 504-620-1000. Do you know why Go Auto Insurance is the fastest growing car insurance company in Louisiana? Go Auto has the lowest rates, and you need less money up front to get your policy started. Call 504 254 3000 or go online at goautoinsurance.com for a fast, free quote. This report is brought to you by Unbound. Chance for storms through this evening, then warm and muggy overnight, lows around 80. And for tomorrow, a mix of sun and storms, hot and humid, with a high of 95, the rain chance 50%. For the weekend, a mix of sun and storms with highs in the low to mid-90s. The rain chance is 50% Saturday, 60% on Sunday. From the Fox 8 Weather Center, I'm Chief Meteorologist David Bernard. There's a girl in El Salvador who dreams of becoming an engineer. There's an elder in Uganda who dreams of having a community to call his own. No two dreams are the same. Help one person achieve theirs at unbound.org. That's unbound.org. Saturdays in the garage from Advance Auto Parts. So I'm trying out this Mobile One Full Synthetic. Yeah. Five quarts for only $27.99 from Advance Auto Parts. It keeps any engine running like new. Like new, huh? Sounds like the perfect oil for an old car with two dented bumpers and a rusty fender. Hey, man, it's what's on the inside that counts. Uh Uh-huh. Like your sweet collection of soft rock tapes? Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back on the road. See store for details. Carl just used True Car to buy a used car in Philadelphia. And now he's feeling confident. That building is where George Washington wrote the Constitution. Oh, there's the Liberty Bell. Cracked when Benjamin Franklin rang it too hard. What? He's so confident because he was able to get all the pricing information he needed from True Car. Carl then worked with a True Car certified dealer and received a nice discount off the list price. Oh, look, the stadium where the Eagles play. World champs. Oh, boy. When you're ready to buy a new or used car, visit TrueCar.com or download the True Car app. Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop. Before you get booked up, head over to 631 North Carrollton, right off Orleans, to Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop. Off the books, Tubby and Coos is a nerd mecca for books, board games, and geeky t-shirts. So book it over to Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop at 631 North Carrollton. If you don't want to do it by the book, use their free Wi-Fi and check their stock at tubbyandcoos.com. Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop, where it's all geek to me. Kasha's Bazaar, located at 5727 Jessen Highway, across from Red, White, and Blue. Geeky collectibles and more. Find them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Kasha's Bazaar. Kasha's Bazaar, 5727 Jessen Highway, the unflea market. Leave the smoke behind and come chase the clouds at the Vaping Tiger in Metairie. The Vaping Tiger has everything to suit your vaping needs, from starter kits to advanced devices. We specialize in handcrafted, artisan-blended e-juices designed to tickle the most fickle taste buds. Come see us at 2812 Athenia Parkway, one block off Vets behind the Lazy Boy Gallery. That's the Vaping Tiger, 2812 Athenia Parkway, and at VapingTiger.com. Come out of the smoke and join us in the clouds. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. This is the Week in Geek. That is illogical, Ensign. Odors cannot travel through the vacuum of space. On Fox Sports 1280. Fascinating. Broadcasting from the tubbyandcoos.com studios. Most illogical reaction. Here's David and Brian. You realize that the aim will, of course, be very crude. Welcome back, New Orleans. You're listening to the Week in Geek on Fox Sports 1280. This is Brian Held with... Eeyore. <laughs> what? I'm tired, man. Uh, dude, it's a I know. Day, but I, I'm getting excited. We have a scientist on board. We us. do. On the line, we have Dr. Jared Espley. He's the Planetary Studies Researcher at the Goddard Sp- Space Flight Center. Uh, Dr. Espley, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. Oh, that's fantastic. We're so excited to have you on the show today. And uh, you're part of the Juno mission. Yep. Yep, that's true. So, um, I mean, th- this is this is... So amazing, uh, you know, to to see the the largest body in in our solar system up close like this. Um, One of the things that that I I absolutely have to ask you is um, I keep hearing that uh, 
seeing Jupiter in in this fashion with with this particular um, um, satellite, it'll give us some insight as to how our solar system is formed. But I mean, how how does Jupiter tell us that? Yeah, it's a good question because that is one of the things that uh, we always like to talk about: the excitement of the science of Juno, which is by exactly like you said, is to try and understand the origin of. Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, but we also uh, talk about how indirectly that can tell us about the origins of planets in general. And, and w- what we really mean by that is that when we look out in space, we see all these other solar systems that we're starting to discover, these so-called exoplanets. Right. Um, we look at those guys, and there are giant gas planets like Jupiter kind of all over the place in those solar systems. And so we don't really know did they form in place, like in, in these crazy close places to the sun, to their own suns? Or did they go, did they form farther out? Did they move around? And so what, what we're really trying to get at is how Jupiter, our own giant planet here in our own solar system, where and when it formed, and therefore where and when Earth would have had to have formed. So it's an indirect a way of looking at planet formation uh, by looking at Jupiter's formation. Nice. All right. Now, if I'm not mistaken, your your focus is um, magnetic field investigation. Is that right? Yeah, it's true. That's my personal uh, expertise. So, I mean, what what will that like? Looking at the magnetic field of, of Jupiter, and, and I understand it's it's pretty powerful. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, what what does that tell us? So, there's two main things they can learn in space uh, by measuring some magnetic fields. You can learn about the interiors of an object because there's lots of magnetic fields that come from planets, from the interiors, from the cores of those planets. And you can also learn about the um, the gas, the charge gas, so we call it the plasma that has magnetic fields in it. Uh, and you can look at the the fields and the particles uh, and learn about how that's set up. But basically things that can cause the aurora, the northern and southern lights that we have here at Earth, are driven by the plasma that either comes from the sun or from um, the planets themselves. Okay. All right, cool. So about uh, four days ago, if if I'm not mistaken, um, Juno's headed back toward uh, uh, Jupiter with uh, all the sensors on. It's uh, in its first capture orbit, right? That's right. Yep, and uh, so pretty soon we're going to be getting a flood of of pictures back and 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 sensor data. Uh, I mean, do you have what's what's kind of the status update right now? Yeah, that's a good question. I was just talking to colleagues about that. Um, so exactly like you say, we are in orbit. That was a, a just tremendously exciting because, of course, it took us five years to have the spacecraft fly there, and you know five years approximately to build the spacecraft uh, from the very beginning. So for a lot of us who've been with it for a while, it had been 10 years to get there to Jupiter. So but we're there. We got in orbit. The spacecraft performed flawlessly. But we're in this really huge orbit that takes 53 days to go around. Um, and that's by design. It's this capture orbit, like you said. But now we're making our very first close-in pass. And then if everything's looking good, then we're going to have another rocket engine fire um, uh, sometime thereafter in order to bring us down to a much closer in orbit. It'll still be a big orbit. It'll be about 14 days, um, but that's, that'll be our main science orbit. So um, so the spacecraft guys, they're super excited to make sure everything goes well so they can do their next rocket burns and get us all the way in, whereas myself and all the other science team, we're super excited, like you say, about all that data. Oh, yeah. um, we don't know where we're going to see. That's kind of the point. It's literally unknown, but we're excited to get it. This is David. I was curious as to how, how fast does the data come back to you so we, you can start analyzing it and start breaking it all down? Yeah, so it um, so it literally takes 48 minutes for the radio signal to travel from Jupiter to Earth. Now, how long it gets from there to, like, you know, my desktop in my office <laughs> or my laptop in my office no, so no, I sit the, there and play with it? The 48 you know what minutes. happens is the radio dish is collected every couple of days or so. There's a time when it's scheduled to, to communicate with the giant radio dishes. There's a whole bunch of other spacecraft that are also using those radio dishes. So it's usually a couple of days before we see the very first uh, version of the data. Uh, probably for that very first part, you know, I bet it will be the same day. They'll, they'll make efforts to get it to us as soon as possible. So when earlier um, we, we talked about um, the magnetic field, um, I remember reading that that field, right, generates a lot of uh, radiation, mm-hmm. and and Juno is going to be just spinning through that in in that real tight science orbit. I mean, yep. And y'all have shielded Juno. Um, I mean, what what is what is that radiation doing to Juno? I mean, it, 
you know, it, it. I mean, I know it would fry us, but I mean, you know, Juno's all metal and circuitry and stuff. I mean, how does it affect Juno? Yeah, so exactly. Like I said, it is super intense radiation environment. Um, and so uh, the way that affects electronics is kind of in two main categories. One, you can imagine that the sensitive optics on the cameras and um, and anything and some of the other spectrometers, things that, that basically work like a camera, when these really energetic particles slam into the detectors, it just creates uh, all kinds of chaos in, in the detectors. And so the the detectors gradually get degraded because they basically just get burned out. Um, and then the other bad thing that radiation does to electronics is you can imagine we have a computer basically on board the spacecraft, and when really energetic radiation slams into a computer, it can mess with the memory that's on board the computer. And so what used to be a one all of a sudden becomes a zero and, right. and vice versa and vice versa. Um, and, you know, we make the computers redundant so that it's always double-checking to make sure that what's supposed to be one is really a zero. But if enough radiation hits it, it can just overwhelm the system, and the computer just is totally fried, and can, or temporarily confused anyway. So we, it would have to be reset and then get back to its, uh, how it's supposed to be operating. So I'm guessing, unlike some of the Mars missions, right, where those rovers kind of went way past their, their expected lifespan, there's probably no such luck for Juno? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's definitely going to die a glorious death uh, from the radiation eventually. Uh, and so the the question is exactly when that's going to be. Uh, and when when that happens, the current default plan is to uh, steer the spacecraft into Jupiter itself before we lose complete control over the spacecraft. Um, and that's so that we don't accidentally crash into one of the moons of Jupiter called Europa. But we think there's actually a possibility, nobody knows, of course, but there's a possibility that there could be life underneath the ice shell that is on Europa. And we wouldn't want to crash our human-built spacecraft there and accidentally um, spread bacteria from Earth at, at Europa. I thought I thought you were going to say start an intergalactic war or something. Well, there is that, but yes, uh, hopefully you know there would be, there would be understanding if an out of control spacecraft came through. But. Right, right. Now, uh, well, you bring up another good point. Uh, is, is Juno get, snapping any shots of of any of the, the moons? It is, but uh, I'll be perfectly frank. It's going to be uh, not all that spectacular because our main science goal, our main focus is on Jupiter. That's been the whole mission design from the beginning. So we're going to be pretty far away from those other moons, which aren't really spectacular places. And NASA does have plans for future follow-on missions to uh, potentially explore those moons, uh, Europa in particular. So I, are, are you already in the planning and, and building stage of, of another mission out there, or what, what, what do we have? What do we let, uh, What else are we expecting? Yeah, so like I said, there is the literally uh, planned right now in the very early stages uh, to have this mission go to Europa and, and make a specific uh, investigation there up close of, of Europa. Uh, and then there's always all sorts of other things going on um, throughout the NASA science uh portfolio. Um, you know, I mean, there's stuff ranging from the telescopes, like the Hubble, and then uh, and those replacement telescopes for the Hubble being developed right now, but there's also all the different missions throughout the solar system, including the Mars missions and the New Horizons, which just went by Pluto. So we stay pretty busy with science at NASA. I'll bet, I'll bet. But you, you, Dave, you know, you and I need to start a petition to get them more funding. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean I like what I do, uh, but yeah, I'm not going to touch that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's cool. No, I mean, look, we, you know, we're geeks here, right? The the weekend yeah, yeah. geek. We love science, and uh, we love what you guys are doing. Uh, we want more of it. So, um, we mentioned. Uh, well, you and I were talking earlier. You mentioned something about Lego minifigs. What? Yeah, yeah, that's one of the really cool stories. Is that uh, they uh, when they put in the project together? I'm not sure exactly who had to discuss with whom, but uh, we got some custom. Lego miniatures that are flying on board the spacecraft, just little, you know, little things off to the side. Um, uh, the little aluminum Legos, and there's three of them. There's one of Jupiter himself uh, and with his little lightning bolt, and then there's Juno, his wife, or in our case, that's the name of our spacecraft, who's looking out, uh, looking in on him. And then the third one is Galileo, who, of course, was the famous astronomer from uh, centuries ago who first discovered those satellites going around 
uh, Jupiter, those moons going around Jupiter. Oh, yeah. No, that's awesome. You sure Batman didn't get smuggled on there anyway? Yeah, that would be awesome. You get the little Batman <laughs> Lego guy arguing with a Jupiter or something. But, <laughs> but, I mean, I think it was cool because, I would say they're not doing anything, but it's just it, this is such a cool thing to tell people, and especially to tell kids, right? You oh, know, yeah. That these Legos are flying out there. I mean, literally. These are literally Legos out there at Jupiter. It's crazy. Well, it's not just the kids. Look, Dave has yeah. kids just so he can still play with Legos, right? Yeah, yeah. I understand, <laughs> Don't man. Rat me I've got out, man. Myself, so. No, that's cool. So, um, now, another thing that, that you and I talked about was um, the, the public at large has a way to help participate in this mission. How How is that? How can they do that? Yeah, that's a really cool thing as well. It's an instrument called JunoCam, uh, and it's basically just a kind of standard uh, visual camera, nothing, no infrared or anything unusual there. It's But it's designed specifically to take just images of Jupiter. Uh, it's not technically part of our science goals per se, so we're, we are allowed to have the public uh, participate. In fact, we not allowed. We are encouraging the public to participate. We have a website uh, where the, the public can go in and say, hey, this looks like a really interesting region at Jupiter. These cloud features are really fascinating. I'd like to get more images of that, and people can vote on it. All the images will be available. You know, obviously the uh, super pro amateurs, if that's not a contradiction, can get all those images and do all their awesome uh, image analysis work that they do with it. Well, um, so it's just a really cool way for anybody in the world to participate. No, that's fantastic. And, and what what's the website? Yeah, so the, it's the most straightforward way to get there would just be to go to the nasa.gov, nasa.gov, uh, slash Juno, and then they would uh, find some links that would take them to, to the Juno Cam website. Well, that's fantastic. Um, no, Dave? Uh, no, I'm, I'm good. I mean, I, I, it's science overload, man. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> oh, man, this is great. Well, um, in, any, anything else uh, you want to you wanna get out there? Doctor, uh, it's just super excited to stay tuned because we—I mean, we barely, literally, just getting started. We're going to be, like I said, having our first close-in pass in just about three weeks, uh, two or three weeks. So we'll be getting the data back soon, so the public will hear a lot more about it. Cool. Well, yeah. We we wanted to make sure we got you in here to to you know kind of kind of get some um, you know ahead of the curve, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm super excited that you know the public and you guys are so interested. I, I checked out you guys' show and. Definitely kindred spirit here. Oh yeah, awesome. Well, you look, you've got our number. So once you start getting some of that data in and, and getting some uh, some cool tidbits, man, we're, we're always happy to have you on, man. Cool. All right, fantastic. Well, uh, uh, Jared, thank you so much. We appreciate your time and uh, hang on for just a second, guys. Stay tuned. When we get back, we're going to get into a little bit of top nerd news, and I think it's going to get a little contentious in here. Are you saying we're going to fight? Probably. Okay, I'm, I'm down with that. <laughs> All right, guys, you are listening to The Week in Geek on Fox Sports 1280. This report is brought to you by Unbound. It's still slowing down on Riverbound. Pontchartrain Expressway uh, starting at Carrollton, heading toward the Crescent City Connection. Earlier accident was cleared on the Riverbound Expressway near Chapatulas. Traffic remains slow in Metairie, heading out to Kenner on I-10 West. We're seeing heavy traffic starting around Causeway, heading out to Power Boulevard. Traffic is also still slow going on I-10 eastbound between Loyola Drive and Power. I'm Lisa Bakke. Follow us on Twitter at Total Traffic NO. There's a girl in El Salvador who dreams of becoming an engineer. There's an elder in Uganda who dreams of having a community to call his own. No two dreams are the same. Help one person achieve theirs at unbound.org. Hi, I'm Michelle Obama. These summer months are some of the most important months of the year for our young people. Research shows that if kids take a break from learning all summer, they not only miss out on new information and skills, they can actually lose up to three months' worth of knowledge from the previous year. Summer should be a time to get ahead, to branch out and learn new skills, to have new experiences. You can't let your summers go to waste. Learn how at summeropportunity.org because smarter summers equal brighter futures. Brought to you by the National Summer Learning Association. Association. Saturdays in the garage from Advance Auto Parts. So I'm trying out this Mobile One full synthetic. Yeah. Five quarts for only $27.99 from Advance Auto Parts. It keeps any engine running like new. Like new, huh? Sounds like the perfect oil for an old car with two dented bumpers and a rusty fender. Hey, man, it's what's on the inside that counts. Uh huh. Like your sweet collection of soft rock tapes? Advance. Auto Parts. Let's get you back on the road. See store for details. 
Janet just saved some money buying a new car, and now she's feeling confident. Thanks for calling the Laughing Bone. I'd like to sign up for an improv comedy class. That's because she used True Car to see what others paid for the same car. She then connected with a True Car certified dealer and saved $3,500 off MSRP. Yep, Janet is feeling pretty confident. What's a pirate's favorite letter? R. No, it is the C we love. Oh, boy. When you're ready to buy a new or used car, visit TrueCar.com or download the True Car app. Tubby and Coos, Mid-City Bookshop at 631 North Carrollton, just off Orleans in Carrollton. Books, board games, and geeky t-shirts. Find them on the web at TubbyandCoos.com and sign up for their geekly newsletter. Tubby and Coos, more than books. If you enjoy books that are sensual, macabre, unusual, and filled with magic, then delve into the worlds of award-winning author and editor Kimberly B. Richardson. Her her books, Tales from a Goth Librarian 1 and 2, The Decemberists, and Mabon Pomegranate will surely satisfy your craving for the strange and unusual. Her books are available through Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, as well as Dark Oak Press at DarkOakPress.com. Have a cup of Earl Grey, turn the pages, and see what lurks within. At iHeartMedia, we have harnessed the power of sound in a way that can help you expand your reach to a new group of target customers and grow your business through customized and effective advertising. Call 844-BY-RADIO or go to iHeartMedia.com. Leave the smoke behind and come chase the clouds at the Vaping Tiger in Metairie. The Vaping Tiger has everything to suit your vaping needs, from starter kits to advanced devices. We specialize in handcrafted, artisan-blended e-juices designed to tickle the most fickle taste buds. Come see us at 2812 Athenia Parkway. One block off Vets behind the Lazy Boy Gallery. That's the Vaping Tiger. 2812 Athenia Parkway and at VapingTiger.com. Come out of the smoke and join us in the clouds. Conscious Bazaar has an unconventional inventory for the discerning geek collector. Comic book related collectibles, vintage New Orleans items, militaria, and plenty for your mundane friends. Kasha's Bazaar, 5727 Jefferson Highway, the Unflea Market. This is Captain Kells, Tim Russ. You're listening to The Week in Geek, Fox Sports 1280. Welcome back, New Orleans. You're listening to The Week in Geek on Fox Sports 1280. This is Brian Held with Ass Butt. What? You're going to Gish Wishes, right? Ah. Yes. As Misha got. <laughs> hey, ass butt. <laughs> it's supernatural, so, man. It's a supernatural. It, it, it is. It is. All right. So, um, top nerd news, Dave? Uh, yes. The New Orleans Zephyrs are back in town. Are they? They are. <laughs> They're totally back in town. And we're going to check them out. But not yet. Not for another 20 minutes. Great. Googly moogly. Yeah, top nerd news. <laughs> And now, your top nerd news stories from around the world, brought to you by Kasha's Bazaar at 5727 Jefferson Highway. And now, your top nerd news stories. All right, first on the list, uh, like you were just bringing up, is uh, Gishways. It's uh, the greatest international scavenger hunt the world has ever seen. You know, I, I always see Misha Collins doing it, always posting videos and stuff like that, but I yeah. have no idea what the hell it is. Well, it's it's uh, something to just bring some levity into the world, right? And and uh, some goodwill. Uh, it's a, it, this whole crazy scavenger hunt. Uh, you you get on a team of, of 14 people, and they yeah. can be all over the planet, right? All right. And you're given a list of items that, that you need to capture a picture or video of or whatever. All the instructions are in that whole list, and it's it's all always kind of wacky type stuff um there was that picture that i took of me in stormtrooper uh you know armor at a spa did you see that one? Oh yeah i remember that now yeah, yeah it was like yeah that was last year okay yeah, it was i want to and and so the that particular item was it it's it's me day you know to take yourself oh, out treat yourself nice yeah. oh and by the way you're a stormtrooper right so <laughs> we we set that up it was a lot of fun it was really cool and okay. i i wasn't on the team and actually I, i'm getting uh badgered by two teams right now Uh-oh. yeah no the, what, is, what is one of the goals like a local celebrity picture or something uh, or? well actually no um one of them is um you know, showing the hardships of like the the revolutionary period and and like you know uh, churning butter and and you know the, I don't so know. So what do the, they want you to do? Wear a bonnet and churn butter? But well, you're you're a stormtrooper with like a tricorn and and, oh, and a musket, God, or which, yeah, just kind of <laughs> right. But um, okay, 
The other one okay. what? has to do with, because uh, I just have to say, get, Gishways means a lot, right? And if it wasn't for Gishways, I wouldn't have made it through that year in college. So thanks, Gishways, and good luck to Team Boomerang. Did you just give somebody away something? Did, I did. You're, I, you're a little cheater, baby, aren't you? I'm not. You didn't no. let me know what you were doing. No. You take advantage of me, Brian. I wasn't I wasn't I feel cheating. dirty. No. I feel dirty. <laughs> I feel that you use the power of your microphone to help someone out. Well, that one of the one of the items on the list for this year is to get like a news anchor or or a you know a, a radio personality or something to to make a, a statement. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, okay, all right, cool. But you know, look, <laughs> the winning team goes to Iceland with uh, Misha Collins for dog sledding on a glacier, partying inside a volcano, and thermal hot springs water fights. How cool is that? Misha Collins is nuts. He is. He is I, I, he's got a screw loose, man. Yeah, he is. So uh, <laughs> there you go, Team Boomerang. Good luck, guys. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, man. And the, to- the show is going down the toilet. All right, what's oh, next? Oh, it's about to now because we're oh, going to bring geez. up what? Suicide Squad. Okay, what? What's what? wrong with it? So, okay. Look, I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it. You're right. So I, don't, 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 I don't have, pee on my foot and tell me it's raining. I have tickets. For tonight at eight thirty, so I can't stick around here. I gotta, I gotta run out of Good, here. Good, because I don't want to hang out with you. <laughs> I gotta go to sleep, dude. That's not what you said last night. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, dude, Suicide Squad is taking an absolute pounding from the critics, man. Who On, cares? What, well, I'm just letting you know. I'm letting the listeners know. It was at twenty nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. But what's crazy? Okay. Is, uh, yeah, it's still at 29%. Um, somebody went and put a petition on James. To take that to get Rotten Tomatoes out of here. But that doesn't make sense, Yes, Dave. it does. Why? They're a bunch of crybaby critics. But ro- I hate critics. Rotten Tomatoes is just an aggregator site, right? It just Would ta- you call me? <laughs> it takes reviews <laughs> from critics, professional critics. and Professional puts a- critics. I yeah. love that. It's right. like the oxymoronic <laughs> thing I've ever heard. And a it, professional critic. But it also takes reviews from, from um, you know, fans. Schlubs. And, and brings them in to one central location. The site is owned by Fandango. Fandango does what? They sell tickets. Right. So they don't want bad reviews out there. They want people to buy tickets. So. No. What do you mean no? I, I don't believe that, that, that logic. You don't you don't believe that Fandango wants to make money by selling tickets? I, I don't believe that, that that having a bad review is gonna like chase people away. So therefore, why do we need a change.org petition to take Rotten Tomatoes down? That's just ridiculous. Because they're big meanie heads and they need to die. <laughs> basically. Anyway. What, the movie the, the movie's gonna be good. I I swear I hate people. Well I hate people. One of the one of the, the movie's things, gonna be good. One of the things that does concern me. And this is from a technical point I of view. I feel bad for your dear and lovely wife who has to go and watch this movie with you. I'm, I'm not going to say you're gonna anything. And you're going to be like, oh, I'm not going to say anything. No, no, no. <sighs> Dude, I don't want these movies to be bad, Dave. But you want, you do secretly. No, you're I, an no. evil bastard. No, I'm not. <laughs> I came out lawful good on the uh, the the Art Borough Plank Game rigged. Test. No, it's not. Anyway, look, there's, look. Some of the technical details, apparently there were two versions of the film. There was a dark and gritty version. Right. And then there was a more lighthearted version. Right. That, that Hollywood did. And they couldn't afford all the millions of dollars of reshoots to, to get it lighthearted. So they just took those two versions and smashed them together. And that's You know that have. for a fact. That's, that's, uh, or a professional critic said that. That's what all the news that I'm getting. Look, I, I, I understand that, that they took it personally when BVS, you know, you know, tanked in the theaters for most intents and purposes by their budgetary numbers over 800 million tanked <laughs> well, I, I don't right. know i mean you understand they, they they were they were hoping for a lot more than that they were hoping to get over a billion right yes. okay so it, in their eyes it, it, it tanked so they they the biggest complaint was that bvs was too dark and too scary and gritty and eh, i didn't understand it because i'm a dumbass and so they they wanted to lighten up uh, Suicide Squad, which I think is a was was the worst idea they ever could have possibly had. You know, you've got the bad guys. Make it dark and gritty. Make them murder an innocent child on the streets because it's funny. Yeah, because well, it's a Suicide Squad. I'm I'm hearing you know Deadpool meets Guardians of the Galaxy kind of mashup. That's what I'm hearing. That would be bad. Well, that's what I'm hearing. So we'll see. We'll see at eight thirty <sighs> tonight. When are you going to see it? 
I'm going to bed. Uh, <laughs> I'm an old man working 16 hour shifts in radio. I love the radio all life. All right. Are we are we almost at a break? Uh no, we don't have another break. We're rolling all the way through. All the way yeah, through. Yeah, come on, man. All right. Well, Iron I, Man Radio. Look, you brought this up and and I think it's fantastic. Uh, the Humble RPG Book Bundle. Yes, dude. All right. So I, I didn't realize what the hell the Humble Bundle was. I kept hearing about it, hearing about it, where it's just like, oh, you know, you can pay whatever you want. Well, pay whatever you want and have to live with yourself later is a completely <laughs> different thing. I mean, I would happily pay a dollar for whatever they're willing to give me. Are you saying and, you have a soul, Dave? <laughs> no, I'm not. Not really. I'm just saying that I'm cheap. Okay. And so they had the doll they actually have a dollar level. Yeah. You know, I mean it's got the masquerade of you know, the original edition, Guy the Camarilla, Bruja, Clan Book, all these things for a buck. Now granted it's PDF versions. But I mean for the they got the eight dollar level, it adds more, and then the thirty the fifteen dollar adds even more. I mean right. that's a that's a huge deal. Fifteen bucks in essence you get the LARP uh handbook, you get everything. Pretty much every book that White Wolf put out in the uh, in the heydays of the '90s, let's all wear leather jackets and go hang out at World Beat on Bourbon Street. Yeah, yeah, no, I I think it's a fantastic deal. And um, don't can't you choose where the money goes? I'm not aware. I didn't look into the uh, the, the, the I don't have a soul, so I didn't look where the <laughs> charity goes. I don't care. I, so, I I just want to know that I'm getting something for my money. I well, don't care where the money goes. Well, you can. And I I did read into it. But uh, there, you can choose, like you know, if you put in ten bucks, you can say, "Well, a portion of this is going to oh, well, go yeah, here." Oh, yeah, says okay. Choose then, where the money goes right. between White Wolf Publishing USA or the World Wildlife Fund. There you go. All right. So you can get cool role playing books and donate to charity at the same and time and help a panda procreate. <laughs> panda porn? Is that what it is? Oh my God, <laughs> Dave! I just sleep the problem. Come on, what's yes. next? Uh, what's <laughs> next? Yet, um, are we ready for this, uh, um, this week in geek history? Yes, absolutely. This week in geek history, we're sending you back to the future. Yes! Oh my God! This week in geek history is brought to you by Five Stones Media. Find them on the net at fivestonesmedia.com. This week in geek history. Yes! Oh my gosh! All right, Brian. Uh, first thing, actually, I have to I have to apologize. I just realized <gasps> we're we're in a new month, and I forgot to do a book of the month. Oh my God! Did your dear and lovely wife just remind you? No, no. no? I'm just I'm I'm sitting here. I'm looking at the time and the date, and I'm like, oh, I forgot the book. Oh. So we'll get that next show. Um, all right. Uh, first item on my list is uh, August first, nineteen seventy. It was my birthday. Well, no, it's seventy five. <laughs> The first incarnation of what would become Comic-Con, the Golden State Comic-Con, begins at the U.S. Grant Hotel in San Diego. Ooh. And I just thought that was apropos since we just had Comic-Con. Yes. Yes, yes. it was. Actually, I, I saw that like on, on one of our other websites that we scour the internet finding cool, nerdy things oh, that yeah? happened in history. Like yeah. my birthday, August 1st, 1975. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> I'm cool. You already got a happy birthday out of me, <laughs> I you. More. What's All right, next, <laughs> next uh, August 2nd, 1997. U.S. patent 5,662,332 was granted to Wizards of the Coast for collectible card games. Well, let's get those nerds! 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 Yeah, and the world was never the same. They, they cracked the addiction. Is that what yes. that was? Yes. Yeah. Cracked the addiction. I mean, I'm I'm surprised that it's going as strong as it's still going. It is pretty astounding. I mean, it's, it's still even at Walmart. You can walk into Walmart, and they still got magic cards up oh, there. Yeah? I mean, you know, they got the Pokemon cards are kind of like edging them out. But, I mean, the magic cards are still going strong. You still got your cards? Um, I do have some. I know a guy who partially funded his way through college playing in Magic tournaments. Oh man, you you, you could you could have done it. I mean, oh, yeah. man, I had I had some early decks that would just, and I had a zombie deck that would just pound people into dust. Oh yeah, oh yeah. What's next? What's next? Uh, August third, nineteen seventy seven. <laughs> Lovingly known as the Trash Eighty. The TRS eighty microcomputer is uh, sold at Radio Shack outlets for the first time. So did did you ever have one of those? No. Wait, wait. The Texas Instruments? Uh, no. No, I had a Texas Instrument. That was my first. TRS stands for Tandy Radio Shack Model Eighty Computer, the or the Trash Eighty as they called it. <laughs> nice. And let me tell you what I uh, believe it or not, back in 1992 when I was 
graduating from high school, I programmed the basic on trash 80s Get for out. my computer science class. Yeah, so it was, D- DJ did a programming camp this week, too. Did man. he? Yeah, yeah. He, he made a game. I actually played it. It was kind of fun. Wow. He even put like a little uh, a little Easter egg in there for me. That's cool. Man, that's a sneaky little turd. Yeah, when we made games, they were all text-based. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, turn left. Yeah. You, you come up on a door. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. August 4th, 1997. According to Terminator 2 Judgment Day, today is the day Skynet goes online. I'll be back. <laughs> Good thing that never happened. No. I, no, I, yes. But you know, uh, speaking of Terminator, I'm reading a book right now. <gasps> You're called, reading a book? I, well, read reading, a book. Read a book. Yeah. Uh, Machinations by Haley Stone. I, we're we're going to, uh, I'm going to try to secure an interview with her because um, she's got another book. Machinations is out. And Counterpart, the the second book in that series, is coming out in October. So I'm setting up an interview with her right now. It's actually kind of cool, a robot apocalypse kind of story. Nice. Yeah. All right, this one is, is totally perfect on August 5th, 2011. Juno, the first solar-powered spacecraft on a mission to Jupiter, launches from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Nice, isn't that great? I know, and, and and we booked that. We booked our NASA guy again, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yes. Uh, September first, bringing uh, him back. Doctor Espley will be back to uh, give us the the most recent update from uh, Juno. Awesome. Hey, yeah. you know what? You reminded me that it is a new month. Yeah, we haven't picked a listener of the month in forever. We haven't. So I, I got somebody in mind. Okay, you know somebody who's been like you know corresponding with us via Facebook and always being helpful, and he's. Unlucky enough to listen to the show that precedes us, Mr. Brian Tibbetts. Oh, yes, Brian Tibbetts, man. Oh, Woo! geez. <laughs> You're the man, bro. Awesome guy. We love him to death. Yes. All right, so I think uh, that's going to be a wrap, pal. Is it? Are, are we already at time? Yes. All right, birthdays real quick. Jason Momoa, Aquaman on the first. Uh, Kevin Smith on the second. Hey! Uh, Evangeline Lilly on the third. Billy Bob Thornton on the fourth. Um, that Neil Armstrong, crazy, man. he is. Oh, Neil Armstrong, he punches fifth, people. And David Duchovny on the seventh. Nice. Yes. The truth. Well, well, why didn't you tell me you're going to do David Duchovny? All right. Well, Let's change that. Change the outro. You never want to look at these. No, I don't. <laughs> All right, guys, that's another exciting installment of oh, the week. What? For the love of God, we got to throw it to disease. Next week, we have a Fallout Pip Boy, a resin cast Pip Boy, a 3D printed, and some bottle caps to give away. More details. Tune in next week, guys. No, we don't. I'm keeping it all. No, you're not. All right, guys. As always, check out the Facebook page. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Check out the Instagrams and download the show at Spreaker.com slash The Week in Geek. Till next time, keep your nerd flag raised high. G-F-L. The New Orleans Zephyrs are back in town. Come see these guys on their way to the big leagues light up Zephyr Field. Family friendly and affordable fun all season long. Visit ZephyrsBaseball.com to buy a four for 44 package. Four tickets, four hot dogs, four sodas, a program, and a parking pass for $44. Visit ZephyrsBaseball.com to find out about promotional nights. There's something fun for everyone. The New Orleans Zephyrs, the new game in town. Get your kids' sneaker game on starting Friday at Kohl's. Score the sneaker brands they love at great savings. Cool kicks from Adidas, New Balance, Asics, Vans, Puma, and more. And any way you pay, take an extra 15% off your purchase. Snag some Kohl's cash, too. Plus, Louisiana. Pay no sales tax Friday and Saturday. Now that's the good stuff. Kohl's. Select styles. 15% offer valid August 5th to 14th. Some exclusions apply. See store or kohls.com for details. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby & Coo's Mid-City Bookshop.